Perth has been hit by a once-in-a-century weather event. The extreme heat is gripping other parts of the country, with Sydney today breaking its hottest summer on record. 17 records tumbled. Perth also set a cold weather record. Yesterday was the coolest February day since records began. Never seen it ever, ever like this before. South Australia has been rattled by yet another earthquake. It follows two other tremors of similar magnitude. And so storm after storm after storm has been moving into California. Dude, this is so gnarly. Heavy downpour. Well, what is causing this unusual winter pattern, Jeff? Two cars were swallowed up by a massive sinkhole. I've never seen anything like this before. So no one knows exactly for sure. There's always natural variability, but this has been an unusual winter. It's been dubbed Lucifer. Maybe uh, once in every 10-year uh, event. The world in some way has to digest this tremendous uh, speed of change, complexity of change. This is happening. This is real. This is happening right now. And so much of the behavior that I see is globalized behavior. It's not just behavior in any one part of the world. We have to let go of that arrogance and embrace the tolerance of true globalization. Last month was the third warmest January on record. And this is the first time in the history of the record that uh, three years in a row were successfully each hotter than the previous. The USGS says the 2016 El Nino generated the highest sea levels and the largest wave energy they've ever recorded. Coastal erosion is at historic levels. The sea level rise is accelerating. It's going to accelerate even faster than it already has. It doesn't look anything like it has in the past, but this is very unusual. I mean, yeah, particularly like things seem to be accelerating to, some, to something. Isn't it? I mean, if, if we look at our life, it seems in the past 100 years, life been accelerating quite fast. Yeah. In the past 20, it's much getting faster. Faster and faster. Pakistan has faced attacks four days in a row this past week. A provocative move from North Korea overnight. This comes after South Korea said the North fired a projectile into the water near Japan. But from around uh, 2011, we have seen a spike in the numbers of deadly uh, conflicts. Police brutality has once again created waves of unrest in France. The rise of uncertainty, we see it in the US, we see it in Brexit, we see it around the world. So to conclude, we're now for global governance. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg positioning himself to be the self-appointed face of globalism. The social media giant pinning a near 6,000 page 6,000 word manifesto, rather. Mark Zuckerberg is taking it upon himself to, to more or less say, hey, listen, we need a one world, uh, sort of a one world uh, situation. It's no longer the case where a country can secure their things and leave other countries vulnerable. Because we're all using the same stuff. We're all using the same cell phones, the same computers, same operating systems, the same internet. Here's what he wants to do. He says he wants to develop a social infrastructure to give people the power to build a global community that works for all of us. I mean, some ominous things in there the surface, but you can read into it and see some ominous things. Well, the devil's in the details. I, I... is ubiquitous and the pace of change is so rapid. Uh, you know, myself having been trained as a computer scientist in the 90s, everybody knew AI didn't work. It's not like, you know, people tried it, they tried neural nets, none of them worked out. And fast forward a few years uh, and now Brain probably touches every single one of our main projects, ranging, you know, from search to photos to ads to uh, everything we do. And there are mental technologies, cognitive technologies, that let us upgrade our brains so we can keep pace in an exponential world. It's an incredible time. The really important point is it's not stopping. Nine years from today, 
the average thousand dollar laptop is going to have the same computing power as the human brain. Now, it might seem weird to, to sort of connect technology and neuroscience. If we understand the algorithms of the brain, can we think about running that on hardware, other hardware that we have, silicon hardware? Uh, and this is a quiet revolution that's happening right now. Sometimes what happens is a scientist can get so engrossed in their work, they don't necessarily realize the ramifications of what they're doing. Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains? The human brain was not designed to move at this speed and to think at this scale. It was designed in a very different time for a very different environment. But here, too, there are upgrades available. And how to upgrade our brain is where I spend the bulk of my time. State lawmakers are considering a bill that would ban microchips from being implanted in people. Similar microchips are currently used to track merchandise, find lost pets, and make credit card purchases. The world's leaders are getting together talking about this. Klaus Schwab, the, you know, the, the CEO of Davos, he called the time we're living in the fourth industrial revolution. He said there's never been a time of greater promise or greater peril. And of course, this has caused a tectonic shift in the field. So there's been massive investment by industry into this field. Billions of dollars from the likes of Google and Apple and Baidu. Biotechnology is a great example. Biotechnology is now accelerating so fast it is moving at five times the speed of Moore's law. It is doubling in power every four months. This is going to be a, a sort of unusual epic journey that a brain is going to take. So we start not with humans, but with rats. And the final resting place of this animal's brain then at Harvard is this. This is a two petabyte storage array. So this is a bunch of hard drives. We're storing what's remains of this animal's brain in digital form there. Now, Republican State Senator Becky Harris is worried they could someday end up in humans. And we upload that man animal's brain to the cloud. You know, this idea of brain uploading is sort of captured a little bit of the, of the sort of popular imagination. So, you know, time and focus and the magazines have started to sort of latch onto this issue. What if we could upload our brain? Maybe that's a path to immortality. The ACLU says there is no urgent need to protect humans, but they agree the technology would violate privacy rights and raise serious concerns. State senators like Nathan Dom question Real ID's intentions. So does that mean that uh, our personal information, biometric data can be shared indirectly with the federal government? And this lets governments get away with a level of surveillance we might never allow otherwise. I, mean, I don't think we would ever let the government demand that we carry tracking devices with us 24-7. Yet we happily put these things in our pockets every morning. You know, we're seeing surveillance inhibiting dissent, inhibiting social change. You will be digesting these computing devices. You will be inhaling them. They will be in everything and everyone. They will be pervasive. What does that hyper-connected world look like? Today, it's not so far-fetched. Everything's changed. We are humanity's last hope. A community mm -hmm. that works for all of us, this goes beyond business. He's saying a world where, you know, there's a no, it sounds like a borderless world. We do trust the technology companies more than governments. We are giving them everything. We're giving them all our data, all our information. I mean, do we want to live in a world where we can be prejudged, where we walk into a store, we're recognized by facial recognition? And in exchange for what? In exchange for convenience. And Gen Z is the first truly global generation. Millennials were the beta test for globalization. Another of the show's big stars, Laverne Cox, who is not only embarking on a new role, she may be making television history in the process. I'm a woman, but I used to be a man. That's right. I remember you told me. The way young people self-identify is changing 
A transgender model graces the cover of Vogue Paris for the first time. Almost as fast as the words they use. Uh, demi boy, demi girl, gender fluid. So our world has changed and people are being more loving and accepting. Are you still comfortable with me representing you? Yeah. I, I just didn't know if it was real or in my mind. It's real. We are in an unprecedented period of change. It is a critical time for humanity. Um, AI, robotics, network sensors, nanotechnology, etc. are the most potent technologies the world has ever seen. Has been very profound and definitely surprised me. But these are the first steps. This is what the first steps look like. And we are living in the golden age of surveillance because this data is collected about us all the time. Final point. While effective global governance in the peace and security realm, I think, is struggling. Three more galactic events sure to have eyes on the skies again. Well, dozens of dead owls have been reported along Interstate 84. It sort of almost looks like they fell from the sky. A mysterious explosion sound heard. I mean, it was boom, and there was like a little bit of a rumble after that. It was so bad it blew a clock off my wall. This may be something we may never get an answer to. All of which is science fact, not fiction in our physical world, with all of its richness and complexity. It's tempting to think of human intelligence as a layer built on top of more primitive cognitive structures, and that we might be able to build something akin to that layer and bypass the messy embodiment that characterizes organic life. A 2010 study by researchers at Stanford University discovered radically more complexity within individual brain synapses than had previously been suspected. In fact, they estimated that a single healthy adult human brain has more switches than all the computers and all the routers and all the internet connections on Earth combined. Just let that sink in for a second. All he says is the old order of things that the gravitational forces, the, the laws of entropy, and all of these things that are the natural forces of our world are no longer the governing rules. That's why when people worship the laws of nature and they talk about mother nature. That pure drive to understand and grasp how the universe works. And the deeper you want to go to probe the microscopic realm, the bigger the machine that you need. And of course, I think as many of you are familiar, the state of the art of this is right here. Large Hadron Collider, Geneva, Switzerland. This is sort of the modern day pyramids, right? This is the most complex piece of machinery that our species has ever created. It's a 27 kilometer long tunnel where particles are accelerated to near the speed of light and then they smash into each other it's here, yeah, but it's temporary, it's not forever. There's a new heaven, a new earth, with a new reality that has a nature that is beyond anything that we can know or understand. It's that reality that Jesus left to come into this earth and submit himself to the incredible limitations of the world in which we live in.